In this Blender tutorial, I'll show you how to create these Christmas holly berries with holly leaves in Blender. And so this can be used to decorate your Christmas and holiday scenes. You could add it to a Christmas tree or you could add it to a Christmas wreath. And that's actually what I did in my recent tutorial where I created a Christmas wreath. So if you'd like to check out that tutorial and learn how to create your own Christmas wreath, you can find the links to that in the description. And if you purchase the Christmas wreath project files, then you'll get some different assets which are pre-set up in Blender's asset browser. And so you can customize and decorate your own Christmas. And then just one more thing before we start, I wanted to let you know about my customizable Christmas lights created with Geometry Nodes. With my Geometry Node Christmas lights, you can decorate your Christmas and holiday scenes. You can edit the curve handles to place the Christmas lights. You can also use the Curved Draw feature in edit mode to draw the Christmas lights to fill your scenes. The Geometry Node modifier has many customizable values to control the Christmas lights. The Christmas light colors are also customizable. You can control shift select the node to view all of the different colors. To make the lights twinkle, just plug the twinkling lights node into the light string. You can then animate the twinkling lights value to make the lights twinkle in an animation. If you'd like to purchase the product, you can find the product links in the description. Now in this tutorial, I'm going to be using this holly leaf image texture, and so I'll have a free download link in the description on my Gumroad store and Patreon page if you'd like to download this image texture to follow along with the tutorial. So I originally downloaded this image from Pixabay, but you can see the image on Pixabay has all these reflections and it doesn't really work well for a base color image texture so I just threw the image into Krita and I cropped out the image to make it transparent and then I also used the clone brush to kind of get away some of those reflections so this will work a lot better for the 3d model of the leaf and if you're downloading on my Gumroad store if you'd like to send me a little tip to help support the channel you can throw in a dollar or two into the price box before downloading that's a great way to help support this channel or you can just punch in zero into the price box and then download for free on my Gumroad store so in a new scene in Blender, I'm just going to select everything. We're just going to delete everything. Let's go to the add menu and I'm going to go to mesh and we're going to add a UV sphere to model the berry. Now, right behind me, after you add the UV sphere, you can open up this setting here to change the UV sphere settings. And I'm going to turn the segments down to like 20 and I'll turn the rings down to like a 12. So it is lower poly. So 20 and 12, and I'll just close those settings. Now I'm going to use the object context menu and just shade it smooth. And then I want to model this better to the real life scale in Blender because the default objects are quite large. They're a little bit larger than an average human when modeling to the real life scale in Blender. So I'm going to scale this object down and I'll type in 0.05 and then I'll just press Control A and apply the scale. So that's the object's new default size. So let's hit the tab key to go into edit mode and I'm going to zoom in here and I want to model the top of the berry. So I'll click here to go to the face select, I'll deselect everything and then I'll hit B for the box select and I'll just click and drag to box select the top faces. And I'll hit the I key to insert those faces and make them pretty small. We're basically just going to model like the little top piece which is on the very top of the berry, kind of like a dark spot there. And then also you can see as I zoom in it's kind of clipping the 3D model because we've zoomed in so close. So you, what you can do is hit the five on the numpad to go to orthographic view, and then you can zoom in farther, and then you can hit E to extrude, and then scale it, and then extrude it again and scale it, and just make the top of the berry. And then also let's hit Control R to add a loop cut, and we'll drag a loop cut in there like that. So we just have that little top there on the berry. And I'll maybe hold down the Shift and Alt key and select these loops here and maybe scale it down a little bit and bring it down so it's a little bit more flat. All right, so I wanna set up some basic lighting and then we can do the materials and you can do this tutorial in Cycles or Eevee, but I'll be using Cycles for more realism. Let's click over here to go to the World Properties and I'll be using a free HDRI from polyhaven.com and the link will be in the description if you wanna use the same HDRI. So here on the World Properties, let's click on the yellow dot next to color and I'll choose Environment Texture and then I'll just open the texture. And I'm going to be downloading this Christmas Photo Studio 01 from Polyhaven. So link is in the description. And I downloaded the 1K and the HDR version. So I'll just open this image. And we can go into the rendered viewport mode to see how this is looking. And also let's click here on the render properties. And I'm going to turn on the transparent button here on the film tab. So the background is transparent. And also let's change the look here to a very high contrast. So it kind of pops out the colors and make things look more contrasty and saturated. All right, so we can now do some simple materials. So we'll go here to the materials. 
Let's click on new to add a new material and I'll just call this Holly Berry. Now on the base color here, I'm gonna make this a red color and make it kind of dark. So a nice rich dark red. And then here on the roughness, I'll turn this down to like a 0.2 so it is more of a shiny berry or maybe like a 0.25 so it's a little bit more rough. All right, let's go into edit mode and I'm gonna hold down the shift and alt key and select all of these loops here, just those loops where the top of the berry is. We'll click on the plus here to add a new material and on the material dropdown, we're gonna choose the holly berry. But then what we're gonna do is click on this button so it duplicates the material and I'm gonna click on this to rename it and I'll rename it to Holly Berry Top. Then we are going to click on the assign button and that's going to assign those faces to the top of the berry. And then here on the base color we can just make it more of like an orangey color and make it really dark so it's kind of like a dark brown. And I'll turn the roughness up to like a 0.6 so it's more rough and maybe turn the base color a little bit more down. And I do think I actually want it a little bit more shiny so maybe turning the roughness to like a 0.4 so it is still a little bit shiny. So let's go back to solid view and that is going to be it for the berry but let's now add the leaf. So what I'm going to do is hit shift A for the add menu. We're going to go to image and we're going to add a mesh plane. And then you can just locate to where you've downloaded the texture. So again, you can get the texture for free on my Gumroad and Patreon. Link is in the description. And here on the material type, just make sure it's set to principled. We don't want it to be set to emission, so just use principled. And I'll click on import images as planes. So I'm now gonna rotate this. We'll rotate it on the x-axis by 90 degrees. So hit 90 and then enter. And then I can move it over and bring it up. And let's hold down the Z button and go to the material preview so we can see what it's gonna look like. Now I wanna cut out the mesh so that there's not as much of that mesh there that we don't need on the edges. So I'll hit one to go to front view and I'll hit tab to go into edit mode. And then I'm going to hit the K button for the knife tool. And I'm gonna hold down the shift key and navigate down here. And then I'm going to click here and I'm just gonna click along here and kind of cut out the mesh. But because the image has transparency, we don't need to cut the mesh out exactly. We can just kind of cut it along just to get rid of some of the extra mesh that we don't need. But it's gonna use the transparency to make it transparent on the edges. And then at the end, just hit enter. And then if I go back up here, I think we missed a few spots. So there was an issue there. So I'll hit the K button again for the knife tool, click up here and then hit enter, go here to the face select and I can select these faces and I'll hit the F key to fill those faces. So I can now just select all the other faces. So hold down the shift key, select all these other faces and I can hit X to delete and I'll delete the faces. And also if you wanna hit the K button again, you can go along here and cut out a few more spots but it really doesn't matter too much, but I will do that. So I'll cut out these extra faces here and then I'll just delete these faces. All right, so now I have the leaf a bit cut out. And then another thing I wanna do is go back into edit mode and select everything with the A key and I'll hit G to grab and I'll just move it up here and stick it there so the origin point is at the very bottom of the leaf. And then I can also just bring the leaf down and maybe let's scale the leaf down a little bit, something like that, or maybe not quite that big. I'm kind of looking at it and trying to scale it to the size of the berry. So probably just something like that is pretty good. And then I'll press Control A and apply the scale. Now another thing that I wanna do is make it look a little bit more three dimensional. So I wanna kind of rotate it. So let's first add some geometry. So I'll hit the tab key to go into edit mode and I'm gonna hit the K button again for the knife tool and I'm just going to click here and then click over here and hit enter and then K button again click here click here and hit enter and I'm just going to continue to do that all the way down just so that we have some extra geometry along the mesh and let's do it one more time here at the very end all right so now the mesh is kind of cut out so now what I want to do is just select like the center face and I'll hit the O key which is going to turn on the proportional editing and I can hit G to grab and bring it forward on the Y axis and then I can scroll my mouse wheel to change the size of the proportional editing just like that and then I'll select the entire thing and bring it back a little bit. So now you can see the leaf is just a little bit more three dimensional and then I'll also use the object context menu and we're just gonna shade that smooth so it's nice and smooth there. So let's just edit the material a little bit just to make the leaf look a little bit nicer. So I'll click over here to go to the shading workspace and I'll go into the rendered viewport mode so we can see that leaf. And there's just a few things that I wanna do to make it look a bit more realistic. One thing that I'm gonna do is take the color and I'm gonna put the color into the normal just to give it some bump. And then we need to convert it to normal data. So let's go to the add menu and I'm gonna search for a bump node and we'll drop it here between the color and the normal. And then the color can go into the height value. So this isn't a proper normal map. So it does look a little bit weird. It's kind of distorted and looks a bit too strong, but this is a quick way just to make kind of a fake normal map if you don't have a normal map on the texture. Now here on the strength, we can turn it down a bit, but what I'm actually gonna do is turn this distance value down. So you can see as I turn the distance value down, the main part of the leaf is more smooth, but then here the edges are kind of bumpy. 
So I'll turn the distance down to like a 0 0.01 and then also the strength, maybe just turn it down to like a 0.5. So now you can see it's mostly a lot more smooth, but then right here along the center of the leaf, it's a little bit more bumpy. So that looks a bit better. Also, I'm gonna go to this roughness here and just turn the roughness down to like a 0.2 because holly berry leaves usually are kind of shiny. They're kind of smooth and reflective. Maybe turn it to like a 0.3 though. That maybe is a little bit better for the reflections. Now you can also click here to open up the transmission and we can turn the transmission weight up maybe to just like a 0.2 so it's a little subtle transmission. And that way, if you look behind here, you can see there's just a little bit of light able to go through the mesh and maybe actually turning it down to like just like a 0.1 would be a bit better. So that way there's a little bit of light Light going through the object so you can turn that on if you want to and then finally I just want to play around with the colors just a tiny little bit so if we go to the add menu we could search for RGB curves and drop it here between the color and the base color so I can click here to add a dot and drag it up and down to make it a bit brighter maybe just make that leaf a little bit brighter and also if you click here on the G for green I could just pull this out a little bit so it's slightly more green so you can just use this to do a tiny little bit of color editing if you want to all right so let's go Go back here to the layout and I can now just create the objects for the berries. So what I'll do is just select the berry and I'll kind of rotate it by double tapping the R key, stick it there. Let's also move this leaf over and a really classic thing with like the holly leaves or holly berries for Christmas is to like duplicate the leaf and rotate it and have like three leaves and then have like three berries. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to rotate these around, maybe add like a random scale to each one. And then you can also select the berries and duplicate them. Uh, three berries berries just seem to work really well together. There's just something about the number three, just having like three little berries that just looks really nice. It just looks very appealing. All right, so there we go. Then I could just like duplicate these again, kind of put them over here so we can have just like a clump of berries. And then we can just have some leaves here with the berries. And then also I can just duplicate this and I can have another one, which is just gonna be the leaf. And you can just continue to kind of make more variations. So maybe I'll make like one more variation, which is like a larger clump of berries with some more leaves. So maybe duplicate the leaf and maybe have like a few smaller leaves kind of behind here. And you can just make some little assets of these holly berries with holly leaves you can add to decorate your Christmas and holiday scenes. And then all of these objects don't have any modifiers. You can see I haven't added any modifiers to them, so I can easily join them all together and there's not gonna be any issues joining them. So I can just hold down the shift key and select all of these objects and then press control J. And now they're just gonna be one object. I'll do that for these two. I'll duplicate a berry here so we have one berry, but then these three, I can hit control J to join them together and then select all of these ones and then shift select one of them so we have an active object and again hit Control j so they're all one object so that'll be it for this tutorial so i hope you found this helpful and thank you for watching and i originally used these assets in my christmas wreath tutorial series so if you want to check that out and learn how to create your own christmas wreath you can find the links to that in the description you can also purchase the christmas wreath project files which comes with some different assets pre-set up in blender's asset browser so you can just add in the assets into your blender project and you can customize and decorate your own christmas wreath and you can also check out my Christmas tutorial playlist to watch more Christmas themed tutorials. So I hope you found this helpful and thank you for watching.